Good day, people. So today, let's talk about and have an in-depth look at card wheels. So, of course, depending what car you own and what you like to drive, there is different car wheels. What? Well, bad jokes aside, let's actually take an in-depth look at card wheels. This is going to be an explanation slash class video where we will be taking a look at various card wheeling variations, finding out that a card wheel is not actually just a card wheel and that a card wheel has so much more to offer than our standard more gymnastics card wheel. The card wheel is often the entry level, the first move for people going into acrobatics and rightfully so. It's quite fun, quite accessible and quite safe. But then throughout the weeks and months of acrobatic practice, often people forget about this very, very cool move, trying to learn fancier things. So in this video, let's try to change this per perspective and let's try to find something, how we can find more joy in the mundane, in the simplistic. Buenas, un cappuccino con avena y también un croissant, por favor. See, while I love to learn new moves and I love to learn fancy new moves, I also love to play with the things that I can already do and tweak them a little bit to make them more interesting. I think a very good verge for practice and life in general is really the ability to stick to one thing and commit to it basically. Instead of learning always the new next thing and purchasing the new next thing and going for the new next thing is really giving yourself time to fully understand one matter only. So let's take a look at these parameters, shall we? Number one, we have the entry of a move. How we enter a move dictates how it will look like and how it will feel like. Then we have number two, how we will exit a move obviously also dictates how it will feel like and what we can do with it. And then we have number three, mid move. So what happens while we are doing the move itself, right? When, for example, looking at the entry, we can do many different things. Jump off one leg. We could also jump off both legs. We could plant this first hand on the floor. We could plant the second hand on the floor. So already here with these three parameters, entry, exit and mid move, we have already thousands of options. But we even have a fourth option to take the essence of a movement and try to apply it somewhere else to really alter altogether how the move looks and really play and mess with the rules and really bend them as far as possible. Now from this a little bit more technical introduction, uh, let's directly dive into the practice. So my recommendation now is join me, simply pause the video whenever you feel like you want to practice a little bit more, but otherwise put on your practice clothes, get yourself nice warmed up with me right now and then we start directly with the practice and you can directly put everything that you learn here into your body, which is the best way of learning movements, right? So let's follow me. Now to warm up, I simply propose at first to uh, go down deep into a squatting position. You can even hold yourself onto an object and simply warm up yourself in this very low condensed position right here, which is very helpful for some of the card wheel variations, but then also is very nice as a kind of safety exiting tool, okay? So if you fall out of a handstand and card wheel, you want to be able to really catch yourself with your feet, so therefore warming them up is quite important. Simply freestyle it right here, okay? A little bit of knees towards the front, knees towards the back, opening the back side of the legs already a little bit. Now next up, because in a lot of these cartwheeling variations, we need some sort of mobility, some sort of stretch in our legs, especially the back side of the legs, right? If we have a very nice swinging mobility, we can use that beautiful for a lot of these variations. Start super simple with a basic back forward swing, like a pendulum. At first, very easy and very lightly. With the repetitions going and with the body temperature rising a little bit, you can try to swing a little bit more. Instead of simply being a cooked noodle, I want to have some sort of stability in my core, so the transmission of the force from my leg into the upper body is there. Card wheels usually happen on our hands, right? So let's try to warm up the wrists a little bit, our arms, our pushing musculature, so we feel nice and secure and confident while being upside down. So the first thing really is 
Simply walking your wrists, shifting the weight nicely from one side to the other side, making sure that your wrists are being prepared in a variety of angles. Next up, we can already integrate all of the pieces that we would need in a cartwheel later on and use them as the last warm-up exercise. It's basically a swing into a handstand, but every time we try to land in a different position, so we kind of understand how we can use our feet as anchors. Imagine this, you're on top of your hands and you fall, which can be super scary, right? So. If we then know how to use our feet as a security net and plant them down on the floor like anchors, we already know, hey, we can save ourselves. So I'm swinging up, but I'm landing somewhere else on the floor. I'm swinging up, I'm landing somewhere else. And if you can just swing like this and jump like this, this is completely fine. If you can take it a little bit further, then really try to play with it. Can you cross your legs? Can you jump backwards? Can you jump forwards? And really, it's not about making it beautiful, it's about making it safe. So you build this confidence. Whoa, so here's a little advert break, okay? Um, I recently launched a new online program of mine. It's called the Acrobatics Lab and it's basically my most most in-depth program I've ever created. It's filled with videos, tutorials, a practice structure, a theory and practical tips uh, for an acrobatic practice. And I would highly suggest that you look into it if you're into, uh, interested in acrobatic practice, right? The program is definitely for all of you out there, but for complete new beginners, I would recommend to start with my Finding Flow Basics program or integrations program first. It gives a little bit more of an easier entry into the acrobatic world. But if you're already experienced a little bit with acrobatics and you can kind of do card wheels and rolls and all of that, definitely have a look at it. And exclusively for this video, if you use this promo code right here, you receive a 10% discount that you can use on your purchase. So actually, no question needed, right? Check it out and enjoy. <laughs> By now, your body should be nice and warm, so let's directly dive into some of the cartwheel variations. At first, we try to simply look at the basic cartwheel, establishing a foundation, basically. From then, we go into the entry variations, then into the exit variations, and then into the mid-move variations. Then we try to combine everything and also try to break the rules of a cartwheel and see what is possible. To start out, let's simply try to understand the basic cartwheel mechanics. At first, the, the coordination of arms and legs. So simply starting out in a wider base already gives us much more options to move around fluidly. From here, instead of taking a vertical approach into cartwheel, I kind of like to do the horizontal approach at first, okay? So really try to have this swing down. Now you simply want to place both hands in a line of your foot on the floor and kind of step around. Poop. Already here you can, can, if you want to create this very nice horizontal momentum, which will keep the move alive and going. So you can simply practice this from side to side. If you have this down, let's directly continue by trying to jump a little bit higher and bringing the hips a little bit higher on top of our wrists, okay? Instead of thinking about black and white, let's also include the gray scales and try to work from low to a little higher, a little bit more swingy, until we can try to bring our feet more and more on top of ourselves. But this really is a process that takes time, so really try to be patient with yourself and give yourself the time that your own unique learning process takes. Now 
depending if you have a background in these acrobatics or you know how to cartwheel, then from now on it might be a little bit easier or harder for you to advance. If you can already do the cartwheel, you can simply orientate yourself using the keyframes in this video and jump to the variations that sound interesting to you. If on the other hand you feel like already a cartwheel is very hard, stay with it longer, try to practice a little bit more and take really slow steps. Parameter number one, entering a move and therefore making it different. Let's at first try to play a little bit with the length of the cartwheel, right? So we can do it in a regular width. We can try to do it a little bit more narrow or a little bit wider. So let's use this at first as a base parameter in order to understand how we can enter a move differently. Second, let's try to play with the trajectory or the pathway that we choose. Instead of just doing it in a straight line, what about curving the cartwheel? What happens then? Instead of starting from neutral, what if we already introduce a pivot from the start? So let's explore this one. Number three, let's just focus on which arm to use on a cartwheel. Right now we try to use both. What happens though if we just use one or the other arm in a cartwheel? Of course, take it as low as you want to or go as high as you can in order to find your right level and uh, difficulty. Parameter number two, exiting a move. Let's try to focus on the exit and find interesting variations. Number one, let's try to focus on landing either very tall or very low and very deep down in the floor after a card wheel. Instead of stopping after a card wheel, let's try to continue with some sort of pivoting or spinning. Let's either try to land very, very carefully like a cat would or let's try to smack a little bit more in the floor, maybe even explode out of a cartwheel with a little jump. Parameter number three, mid-move. What can we do while doing the card wheel in order to make it a little bit more interesting?
Let's at first play with speed, maybe going very fast, but then on the contrary also trying to go as slow as possible. Maybe even bringing the cartwheel to a stop. Integrating the eyes and looking somewhere else. Why not looking at the camera or at a mirror that is opposing you? Why not look at a person that is walking in the distance or trying to look at the sky? Let's add a little bit more complexity and let's try to change our legs mid-air and maybe even change the arms mid-air, so taking a couple of steps. Parameter 1, parameter 2 and parameter 3. Now what happens if we combine them? Put on a song for about 5 minutes or so and simply try to go from one acrobatic form to another acrobatic form trying to see what happens in the process, right? I like to have it happen a little bit more spontaneously. So I simply allow my body to move and on the go I try to see what is possible, sometimes focusing more on spinning, sometimes focusing more on holding balance, so on and so forth. And already be ready for surprises. Sometimes in these open form scenarios your body really does things without you actually planning them and it's quite amazing. So already maybe put on a camera and record what you're doing so you can view it afterwards and keep track of all the new variations. Him who's had it, will never let go. All this searching has come to an end. Him who's seen it will never be searching again. If you have it, you feel it. It's ways unfolding. In front of you, yeah, we are. All right, I know. I teased you about bending the rules and trying to see if we can use the card wheel in a different context, maybe, right? So, if we think about it, a card wheel is a starting position, then we transition into something kind of with a switch of the legs and we land somewhere else. If we apply this idea now to different contexts, I think we can create interesting things. Let's start with an aerial move, right? Using a card wheel but without touching the floor. We already have this variation of an aerial or butterfly kick. If you dare, you can try now to jump a little bit higher and kick both of your legs just a little bit higher into the air. if we take the card wheel but instead of doing it on the floor we use obstacles to do it right so kind of applying it to an urban or natural landscape A 
different perspective on the card wheel. Now, I hope that through this video you were inspired to try different variations of a card wheel and look at the card wheel with a different point of view. Not only to keep you interested in your practice, but also to sharpen your creativity on the go. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, maybe even comment for a future video that you would like to see, um, as I will definitely keep the ball rolling and the waves flowing. If you're interested in this kind of practice, check out my online programs, www.neilteisner.shop. Scroll through, enter the flow and enjoy practice. See you soon.